problems you guys had on your homework, right, on page 131, the really only difference, instead of it equaling 0 and saying solving, we just had it look like this, f of x equals. And then we say what? Find the zeros. So then what are you supposed to do? Set your function equal to 0, so now it's an equation. So now we solve the problem. So the only difference that I've added with your homework is just an extra step by giving you functions and saying, eh, find the zeros. So now you have here, and we have to say, all right, well, how are we going to solve for x? Well, in this case, we have a trinomial. We can't just isolate the term. What we're going to have to do is apply the zero product property by factoring. So Zoe, what I'll do is I need to say, all right, well, if I can factor this, I'll factor this into two binomials set equal to zero. Now, remember, when looking at this, we, when we are applying FOIL, we know that our last two terms, our, I'm sorry, our first terms and our last terms. Our first two terms are going to multiply to give us 2x squared. So our only, pot, our only integers that we will be able to have to multiply to give us 2x squared is 2x and x. We could look at the negative, but we're going to avoid looking at the negative. Do I point to the, another sheet of paper or you did it with that one? Oh, you did it on that one. Okay. Sorry. So we could have 2x and x. Then we need to determine what two numbers can we multiply to give us negative 3. Well, for negative 3, we want to look at the positive and the negative. So we could say negative 3 times 1 or 3 times negative 1, right? Those are only possibilities. So when you only have two possibilities, even when you have more, a lot of them is just like, let's just do guess and check. All right, let's do the first one. Negative 3 plus 1. So let's see if that works. Because what I'm going to do now is I know that the, the green, I'm I know that 2x times x gives me 2x squared, and I know that negative 3 times 1 gives me negative 3. However, does 2x times 1 and negative 3x times x give me a positive 5x? No. no, it does not, right? So maybe I should switch them around. Maybe I should do negative 3 and positive 1. Does it when it looks like that? Does that multiply now to give me... Is no. that the same thing? Yeah. Did I rewrite the exact same thing? That's kind of fun. All right, so let's do negative 3 and positive. Right? Positive. We'll do positive 1 and negative 3. Right? Yeah. Okay, go. So let's go and take a look. 1 times x is 1x. 2x times negative 3 is a negative 6x. Negative 6x plus 1x is going to be negative 5x. So that doesn't work because we need a positive 5x. So I should turn, well, what if I made that positive and that negative? And there you go, now that works, right? Um, because negative, negative 1 times x is negative x. 2x times 3x is 6x. 6x minus x is 5x. Now that works out. So Caroline, the next thing I'm going to want to do now is now that I've had it factored, now I need to apply the zero product property. So I can set both of these equal to zero. And now I can solve for x, right? So therefore, x equals a positive 1 half, and x equals a negative 3. And those are my solutions, or what we call our zeros, okay? If it was a function, we call it our zeros. Right now, it's just our solutions. Or sometimes we call it our roots.